All right. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, when I'm asked to solve this equation again, what we're looking at is again we need to set our equation equal to zero. Now, here in this case, we have it set. E we have it y. Well, what we can simply do is, if you guys think about this, if you have an x-axis and a y-axis, we're looking for where the graph crosses the x-axis. So, what I want you to understand, Marissa, is at that value, at where the x crosses or where the graph crosses the x-axis, y is equal to zero. So. I need to set this equation equal to 0. All I'll simply do is replace the y with 0. So in the last problem, we had to get everything on the same side. In this problem, we basically just have to rewrite the equation with y set equal to 0. Now, I'm going to go through the exact same type, but rather than showing you guys with the box and factoring, I'm just going to give you a different technique just for some of you guys that you know, want to try something else that maybe m might make a little bit more sense. However. When doing this technique, the same thing is going to be the case. We still need to determine a times c and b. So ax squared plus bx plus c. So a times c in this case is, uh, oh sorry, 3 times 28. Huh? 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 28 divided by 3? <laughs> oh, you don't have to do that with me, love. Three. I know. I was like responding to your question. You said you wanted to do 28 divided by three. So that becomes 56, 70, 84. So you have 84 and negative 25. Okay? That is your A times C, that is your B. What we need to do is determine what two numbers multiply to give you 84, but then add to give you 25. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, the way that I like to do this, do not tell me, oh, it doesn't work. Think of, let's work through numbers here that can multiply to give you 84. And the best thing I like to do with this is don't make this confusing. All right, start with the smallest number first, which would be 1, and then just work your way up. So obviously, 1 always works. 84 times 1. Now, let's do 2. We know it's even, right? So how many times does 2 go into 84? 42. Now, let's look into 3. Does um, 3 go into 84? Well, 3 goes into 30, right? It goes into 60. So therefore, after it goes into 60, we'd have 24, right? And so it'd be 28. Then let's go and double check 4. So when we have 4, does 4 divide into there? How many times? 21. <laughs> All right, and now guys, I can stop. I can stop at 5. I don't need to get to there because I automatically see, hey, 21 and 4 add up to give you 25, right? Or you could even see that 23, 28 and 3 also give you 5. But the important thing is these two terms multiply to give you a positive, but they add to give you a negative. Sierra, please look up here. So therefore, since they multiply to give you a positive and they add to give you negative, that means both of these factors have to be negative. So if you're adding two negative terms, you guys can see, Vanessa, put that down. You can see that the only two terms, only two factors that multiply are negative 21 and negative 4. Now, what I'm going to do for you guys is a little bit different. Rather than putting it in a box, I'm going to show you a grouping method. Does everybody see what I did with that? I just like how I did it in the box. I just rewrote what those two terms were that multiplied negative 21 and negative 4. I just rewrote them in front. Does everybody see that? Does everybody agree that the first equation and the second equation mathematically have the same values? Right? The only thing I separated, the only thing I changed was now I broke up negative 25 to be represented as negative 21x 
minus 4x. And the only reason why I did that is because negative 21 times negative 4 gives you 84, which was a times c, and adds to give you negative 25, which is b. So now, what does that do? Because you could obviously put all these in the box, right? If you guys wanted to do this, the, the way that I last taught, then you'd do 3x squared minus 21x minus 4x plus 28. Right? You guys could use the box method over there, Vanessa, but you don't have to. There's another way I want to show you guys that you could use at the box. Okay. I'm, not going to do the bo I'm not going to do the box in this example. What I'm going to do in this one is maybe some of you guys might have a little bit better success or better understanding of what we call the grouping technique. And basically what we do with the grouping technique is once we found those values, now all we're simply going to do is determine what the GCF is for each of these. So we group the first two terms, and then we group the last two terms. And now we're just going to factor out the GCF of each one of them. It's OK, Jasmine. You can turn forward when you're ready. So when we look at this GCF here, you want to determine what term do these two, what do these two have in common. And you can say, obviously, they have a common a 3x. So you factor out a 3x. And when you factor out a 3x, you're left with x minus 7. Then you look at these two terms and say, all right, now here I can factor out a negative 4. And when I factor out a negative 4, I'm left with an x minus 7. Now this is where it gets a little bit confusing until you start getting the hang of it. But what I want you guys to understand with this, Macy, is now you factored out the GCF once. Now we need to factor out the GCF again. So you say, all right, out of these two terms, out of here, and out of here, what do they share in common? And Vanessa keeps on looking down. She's not writing this down. But you can see the x minus 7. So you factor out the x minus 7. And you're left with, please, Tamisha, 3x minus 4. Right? So now I have this that I can apply for the zero product property. Now you can solve x equals 7 x equals 4 thirds. So ladies and gentlemen, when you're looking at this, um, when you guys go through this, you can use the box method. That's fine. Or if you prefer to use grouping, I just want to give you guys an extra technique. 